And good evening once again, day 185 of the Biden administration. And this was the day a Republican governor of a deep red state actually said out loud that it's, quote, time to start blaming the unvaccinated for this dramatic spike in illness in her state. You'll hear her say those words in just a moment. But first and importantly, it's now noon Saturday in Tokyo. These are live pictures. The Olympic Games are underway in a world still very much in the grip of this pandemic. The virus forced a year-long delay of these games, and once again, the illness is surging there in Japan. The risk made for a subdued opening ceremony, let's call it, in a nearly empty stadium, even as four-time Grand Slam tennis champion Naomi Osaka lit the cauldron, there was no doubt these Olympics will be unlike any other we've ever seen. The IOC did not require athletes to be fully vaccinated against COVID. Just today, the doctor for Team USA estimated that 83% of the competitors were fully vaccinated. That's still a lot better than our country as a whole. Over half the nation remains unvaccinated. CDC says today saw the lowest number of shots given since early January. That plus this super contagious Delta variant continue to drive this surge in new COVID cases. CDC data are showing the seven day average of new cases. Now the highest it's been. Are you ready for this since the beginning of May? As we've been told, this is now largely a pandemic of the unvaccinated this time around, and anger and frustration at those who have not yet gotten the shot is growing. As we mentioned at the top of this broadcast earlier today, the Republican governor of Alabama, the state with the nation's lowest vaccination rate, called out those who are still holding out. Folks supposed to have common sense. But it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us stay. I've done all I know how to do. I can encourage you to do something, but I can't make you take care of yourself. There it was. Meanwhile, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio calling on private companies to require their workers to get vaccinated. A new AP poll found 45 percent of unvaccinated Americans surveyed say they will definitely not get a shot. 35% of them say they probably won't get, get one, while 64% of the unvaccinated say they have little confidence that vaccines are effective against variants. Remarkable numbers, truly. White House maintains it has no intention of getting behind any kind of mandates or requirements. They will stay the course trying to convince people to get one of the three vaccines that are available. We always knew it would be harder as more people got vaccinated. That's the stage we're in now. We have to stay at it to save people's lives. Now, the government has also purchased an additional 200 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine to be delivered from October through April of next year. In fact, just tonight, the New York Times is out with a story that Biden administration health officials increasingly believe, as is the case with other vaccines, Many of us will, in fact, need booster shots as expected. Time says senior officials now say Americans 65 and older or Americans who have compromised immune systems will most likely need that third shot from Pfizer or Moderna. There was a victory of sorts tonight for Florida's governor, where the number of new cases is soaring. Late today, a federal appeals court blocked CDC restrictions that have prevented a large number of cruise ships from docking in Florida. CDC had argued the rules were needed to prevent further outbreaks, but the state said the rules were overly burdensome. Just today, the state reported over 13,000 new COVID cases. That's in one day. With all the progress we made on this virus, Watching our country now take such a big step backwards, what a test for this or any presidency. Yeah, and of course, for Joe Biden, the success of his presidency to some degree now depends on convincing voters who didn't vote for him, who don't trust him to go ahead and take this vaccine that they have been so resistant to. It's a it's a it's it's the flummoxing, right? We managed to get a vac vaccines that work, that are safe and that are effective. And now the task turns out to be, I think, more difficult than the White House imagined to convince the resistant to go ahead and get it. I mean, we, the White House has not reached its goal 
of 70 percent uh, vaccination rate by now. That is a disappointment and a warning sign. It's hard to do other things unless and until this pandemic is under better control. Jonathan Lemire, uh, I don't have to remind you, governors hardly act as a pack along party lines, but they do sit up and pay attention and they watch the actions of one another. And Governor Ivey in Alabama may have started something. Tell us how resistant the White House remains on any kind of vaccine requirements. Yeah, it was striking words from the governor of Alabama today who noted the terrible vaccination rate in her state and talked about in very candid terms about how the people who would not get the vaccine were delivering such suffering to themselves and potentially to their loved ones. The White House to this point still shying away from the vaccine passport or something like that. They are every day trying to come up with ways to encourage Americans to take the vaccine. They're well aware of these pockets of unvaccinated people. It, not only are they right now at great risk for contracting the highly contagious Delta variant, but the longer the virus kicks around in the, you know, in the United States, the more chance there could be a further variant that might even uh, be more able to to dodge uh, the protection offered by uh, the vaccine. But right now, there's been discussions this week, as my colleagues and others have reported, uh, about masks, whether there should be, uh, CDC is considering mask requirements back for vaccine individuals. So far, not yet, um, but they're having regular check-ins about it. Um, and certainly, yes, the, the surge in the virus endangers what the president is doing right now. It's ec the nation's economic recovery, it endangers his agenda, and endangers his ability to tell the, Amer the American people that the nation has turned the corner on the pandemic. So, Cynthia, let's merge your life's work in the law with the topic of public health. You know, it was Fauci who said just a few days ago, if we had had this kind of anti-vax campaign in this country during the fight against polio, smallpox, we may still be uh, dealing with those diseases today. Who knows? We might yet. Uh, what are the, the legal rules and ramifications surrounding requirements to get vaccinated? Say you want to attend a public event, a private event. Say your own private company wants to require it. Well, you know, the EEOC has said your, the, your private company can require it and as long as they make uh, some sort of um, arrangement if you have a health condition and can't have it or if you have some religious objection. So private companies can do it. You know, I, I was thinking about this today. There really is an analogous situation with smoking, which may turn out to be interesting. And that is uh, states and insurance companies, uh, for example, in Texas, uh, the Texas public health um, system, there's a surcharge if you smoke. It's 30 bucks a month. Kaiser, it's 25 bucks a month. And it may be that we have to have some of these carrot and stick things. It may have to be you can't, you know, the government may have to say you can't get on a plane unless you're vaccinated. It may be that your employer is going to have to require vaccinations. And it may be that you're going to have to pay more for insurance if you refuse to get vaccinated, because it's costing us all a lot of money, these people who are refusing to follow the science and are ending up, you know, 20 days on a respirator and, and then we're all paying for it or anything, any other terrible thing that happens to them, including spreading the disease to other innocent people. So I, I think it's a multi-layered approach, but there are ways to um, carrot and stick and to try to up the vaccination rate in the country that are legal.